So I've been thinking for a while about how I can use my 3D printer for more than just practical parts and things that generally will be hidden in the final product. Obviously 3D printers are extremely versatile tools, uh, but I feel that the parts may be a bit flimsy and they frankly don't look so good. But in this project I decided to go all out and use the 3D printer for almost everything. It would also be a good introduction to Fusion 360 by using it for the entirety of the design, where I have previously been using SketchUp. I have nothing against SketchUp, but there are certain things that just aren't practical for 3D printing, such as how the circles are being segmented into a finite amount of straight lines rather than a round curve. So this is my finished model in Fusion 360. I'm using some acrylic glass, such as for the base plate and uh, wing-like objects, but uh, the rest will be printed either in PLA or PETG for the parts and all will be exposed to some heat. So the entire structure is built around this central column, which functions both as a speaker enclosure and as a place to hide electronics. I'm also going to mount an LED matrix in this curved object and uh, these brackets that are coming down from the heavens right now will help mitigate the weight of that a little bit. Finally, the acrylic plates here uh, I will sew on a table saw, but I'm also going to cut out this semicircular shape with a jigsaw, so these uh, covers will help a little bit to hide the terrible, presumably, cut that will give. So the reason why I'm using two microcontrollers is quite simple. The fast LED library, which I'm using to control the LED matrix, didn't work very well with the DAISY Seed, which is the DSP engine in this project. This is a digital synthesizer, so the only other component I needed was an amplifier, which in this case is a 2.5 watt LM380. The music is based on an algorithmic composition built around two generative sequences of notes and rhythms. It's basically a new, ever-evolving song each time the sculpture is restarted. The DSP part in the DAISY Seed is very simple and can easily be manipulated with the DAISY Duino library. My code practically consists only of two pulse width modulated oscillators, a Moog-like ladder filter and an overdrive. There's also a modulated stereo delay, but only one channel is fed to the amplifier. The LED matrix, which is controlled by a Nano Every, receives various musical cues from the DAISY, which triggers pattern changes and changes in light strength. So with all the parts printed, I'm going to use a combination of techniques to join the components together. For the parts that aren't bearing any loads and only will be mounted once, I'm going to tap directly into the plastic. But for the parts that probably require a bit more mounting and dismounting, I'm using threaded inserts that fuse directly into the plastic around them. It's most likely not any stronger than tapping directly into the plastic, but they have metal threads uh, which won't bear out as easily. Finally, for the parts that might be under a bit more load, I use nuts pressed into debust hexagonal shapes. Here there's no risk of the material surrounding the hardware disintegrating over time, and you get more surface area for the hardware to lean on. Note how the hexagon is oriented with the vertex pointing upwards to give support for the material as it is printed layer by layer. So while the assembly process plays in the background, I just wanted to give a shout out to my patrons and also mention that I was hoping to make a limited run of this sculpture with uh, slight variations in design, sound and light. So if you are interested in acquiring one, send me a message. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of the video. 
The LED matrix came with both input and output data connectors for cascading, and I didn't need the output, so I'm using the female connector to connect the input to the motherboard. The motherboard also contains the two microcontrollers and the amplifier. I'm also using connectors for things like the volume knob, power switch and speaker, so that it's easier to remove in case I need to change something in the future. So as mentioned in the design part of this video, the LED matrix will be placed in this curved screen. It has tracks on the bottom and sides, but it also has a lid, which made it easier both to print and to assemble. A diffuser, which is printed in clear PETG, is pressed into similar tracks some millimeters away from the matrix. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to display on the matrix when I first started to write the code. Initially I had a uniform color changing in strength along with the amplitude of the audio signal, but then I changed it to something looking like a shape-shifting ship flying through space, which you will see a bit later in the video. There's not too much to say during the finishing touches here, uh, but I could add that I normally like to coat my acrylic plates with an anti-static solution, which seems to help against the collection of dust at the cost of some transparency. Here though it ended up not mattering because I decided to frost the acrylic by sanding it so that the light would be diffused along the entire surface and not just the edges. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you have any suggestions to what you would like to see or maybe dig a bit deeper into in the future, then uh, write it in the comments. I decided to spare you of all the sanding and drilling details. Uh, if you have watched my previous videos, you are probably thanking me right now. So yeah, uh, I think that's it. Uh, see you around. Thank uh you. -huh.